Hello everyone. Today we're going to talk about why ionic compounds conduct electricity and why covalent compounds do not. And what we're going to do is we're going to use two representative samples to aid in that explanation. We've got our table salt, um, which is made up of sodium and chlorine. And we've got our sugar, which is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So let's just take a quick peak there, there's sodium, Na, there's our metal, and our non-metal, and when they hook up, they form an ionic compound, right? And there's our sugar, and we've got carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen, and we notice that hydrogen, even though it is on the metal side of the periodic table, it is not a metal, it's only in that location because it has one valence electron, so we treat it more like a non-metal. It's only there for the Lewis structure purposes. Okay, let's go back and let's test the conductivity with our conductivity apparatus. We've got our light bulb and it's attached to a battery which has two electrodes, the negative terminal and the positive terminal. And we notice that here, water on its own, that is our solvent, is not conductive. So let's see what happens when we add a little bit of salt and we notice that, oh, the light bulb is starting to glow a little bit bright. Let's see what happens if we add a little bit more salt. And we notice, oh, it appears as if it's becoming more conductive. So that is very interesting. Let's reset that and add a little bit of sugar. Add our conductivity apparatus, add some sugar, and that's our covalent compound. And no matter how much I add, it doesn't appear as if we can get that conductivity apparatus to light up. So what's happen happening at the microscopic level? So if we had supersonic eyes and we could see um, what is going on, then I'm gonna switch my tab and we'll notice that with sodium chloride, when it comes out of the shaker, there is the crystal lattice that we've talked about earlier. We notice that it breaks apart in the water, that crystal lattice no longer is together. We have a whole bunch of mobile ions, the cations and the anions floating around. So the cations would be that sodium ion and the chlorine would be the anion, the negative ion. And those are all now mobile, okay? Let's take a look what happens when we add sugar or sucrose. So there's sucrose, it's coming out, and we notice that, oh, the sucrose molecules tend to be staying intact. The structure is not breaking apart in solution. Let's see and what's going on. So in order to get a better understanding of what's happening, we're going to take a look at the solvent itself, and there is water. Now, we know from a previous lesson that water is a polar molecule. And the reason why it's polar is it because it has partially charged regions on the actual molecule itself. So it has a partially negative oxygen and it has two partially positive hydrogens. And the reason being is because oxygen is the more electronegative atom and it likes to have the pair of electrons that's being shared closer to it thereby giving it a slightly um, partial negative end, or what we call a dipole. So when I place table salt, the crystal lattice of sodium chloride, into the water, we're going to notice that the partial positive hydrogen atoms are going to be attracted to the negative chlorine. So watch for that. And the partial negative oxygen atom of the water molecules are going to surround the cation of the sodium and start to pull it out of solution. So watch for that as this simulation plays on. And there we have it. The partial negative oxygens are surrounding and we say that it's hydrating. And oh, chlorine, er, they're out of um, the picture now. So they've been carried away. So now in solution, you have a whole bunch of ions that are free to carry a current. Charged particles will conduct electricity when free from their lattice, okay? And when we reset and we see what happens when we drop sugar in, we notice that those sugar molecules stay intact and they are not um, broken apart by the water molecules, okay? There is enough of an intermolecular attraction to get that sugar to dissolve um, in this situation, but 
not sin- significant enough to rip the actual hydrogen, oxygen, and carbon out of its structure. Okay, and there you have it. No mobile charges when we have covalent compounds, but ionic compounds definitely get ripped apart. And we are done.